So it turns out yesterday wasn't really what you'd call a red wave. A red puddle? A red piddle? I think we'd call it more of a blue crush, if we're being honest. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not the type of guy to say I told you so to all these mainstream media outlets that bought into all these polls that were manipulated by right-wing outlets that did polls just to manipulate the numbers and fool people and make Republicans more confident so they'd come out and vote more was their theory. Or the fact that these polls don't poll Gen Z younger folks who turned out in droves earlier this year to upend polling by 15 points and stop an abortion ban in Kansas and elected Democrat who was supposedly down by eight points and they won by two points in a, a district, New York 19. Um, and in Alaska that defeated Sarah Palin. By the way, she was defeated again. It's so nice. Um, but the key here to know is that they were wrong and they didn't know what they were talking about and this is what we run into all the time with the new york times and with numerous media outlets the new york times is the worst of any of them because they put out something and they end up influencing everybody else whatever they say when it was hillary's emails to them it was hillary's emails to everybody and so in the future you know i know this may sound self-serving but you need to listen to more to voices like mine here and, and you know, numerous other channels, friends of ours, right? Farron Cousins is, is a good buddy of the Midas Brothers and, and some of these other guys who don't sit there and take pressure from publishers to say certain things and don't think, how do I get my career to move up the illustrious New York Times? And don't, but people that actually sit here and want to get you the truth, okay? I was objective about everything. I got some things wrong and I'll talk about that more in some videos. But everything I told you was based upon my experience. It was a mixture of best practices, you know, learning from campaigns experience and what I saw in terms of fundraising and, and what I saw in terms of how good the candidates were doing and when they were debating and speaking. And then I combined that with knowing the outlook of the district and actual analytics. Like Lauren Boebert right now, for example, who looks like is going to lose and I predicted would lose. Now that could be wrong. Listen to people that have an interest in actually getting you the truth. Um, again, I'll talk more about what I got wrong. I got the Tim Ryan race wrong here in Ohio, and there are reasons for that. Dumped, a ton of money was dumped in by weirdo billionaires and turtle uh, majority leaders and people like that. Um, and, and there are others. But at least looking at a combination of evidence and using experience and giving you the best idea I have is what all I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to entertain you too. We have a lot of things to laugh at today because it looks like the Democrats still have a small chance of holding the House. They have a, a very big chance that they'll hold the Senate and even gain a seat. They picked up state legislative chambers in, in Michigan and Minnesota, state House and state Senate, held on to governors. We have trifectas there where we can do real governing on key issues. You saw what happened when we got all three in Virginia a couple of years ago, like gun safety and women's rights and voting rights. These are all really important. Uh, we held governors in Wisconsin and uh, and Pennsylvania, incredibly important when the other side tries to cheat as they will or tries to pressure people to change results that we're running those states. And we may knock off crazy Carrie Lake in not, she's not an incumbent, but knock her off and win the race in Arizona, in which case that'll be a, a gain of a governorship, which would be very nice. So overall, don't call it a comeback, just call it a blue crush.